Hello, this is David Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. I was watching TV with my daughter, uh, and it was this show from a movie that's turned into a series called, I believe it's called Big Hero 6, about these these kids that live in this myth mythical place that's a cross between Tokyo and San Francisco, San Fran, Tokyo, and it's a cross between the robotics of Japan and the Silicon Valley AI and all that stuff. So that's the idea, and of course they've got these smart kids who are like in the future doing these amazing things. Instead of making apps on phones, these people are making things that are real in the real world. So what, are, what we think about kids today making apps and becoming rich, they are making things, robots and things that happen, etc., that kind of thing. And in this series, this new series, which was very new, I tried to look it up online and find the transcript, but I couldn't find it. But there was, they have a university, and you're, it's like their MIT or whatever, but in this future, and it's more of things that just don't happen today that are, that are really impossible, uh, at least for now and maybe for a very long time. But they are in this this university, and they have these courses. And one course, this one guy asked, the, the, the guy coming in, this new guy, he said, he gave the name of the course, and this thing hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm pretty sure what the, this is the name of it, but do not quote me on it. But I believe he says, oh, are you in the applied particle physics class with me? That hit me like a massive ton of bricks. I mean, it was an epiphany. Why? Because here are people who are cartoonists and story writers. That's what they are. They're artists. I'm an artist myself. Yes, I'm an artist. I draw and all that. Go to dehilster.com. Look at my stuff. I'm one of those people that actually am an artist and a scientist. Fine. So, yes, I know something about art. And these people in Hollywood, I lived in L.A. for about 25 years. These people are artists. They're also story writers. And they are, they are around people who are in the business of Silicon Valley and the software. And they do, a, you know, this whole movie is made in software. And these people deal with physics simulations in their software all the time. So they write this story thinking, well, the problem now today is we have theoretical physics. We don't have practical physics or better than that, applied physics. How many quark machines do we have? How many uh, uh, Higgs bosons microscopes do we have? We do say we have quantum computing, but we don't know how and what happens in the quantum world. We, we talk about it a lot, but it's so bizarre, that's a whole problem. We'll talk about that in, in, at some time. Quantum mechanics. The problem with that is we have no models for anything. We have no physical model for light. We don't have no physical model for electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic wa uh, waves, which is light. We don't have uh, any types of model for magnetism. We don't have gravity. None of that. Some of us do, of course. I always say that. And we can explain these things. But they don't. So what they are looking to in the future is to say, folks, we, our theoretical physics is doing nothing right now. I'm seeing in the future that someday particle physics will be applied and be used. Now, there's two things about it. One's really hilarious, and one side's pretty profound. On the hilarious side is that today's particle physics, it is a joke. It's a dead end. It's going to be thrown out. We've got people already standing up to that, like Dr. Alexander Unsker, the Machian on YouTube, the Machian, one word, go see him. He is out there saying, we've got to throw this away. It's true. If you look at the particles, I mean, look and look up the diagram. Try to find the physical makeup of the subatomic particles, the sub subatomic particles of quarks and how they make up protons, electrons, neutrons. There is nothing. I mean, nothing. There are circles in other circles. They are nothing. There's no physicality to it. So what, what the mainstream right now is all theoretical. It does not work. The only thing that makes us do anything is experimentalist. Thank goodness for them. In my movie, I called one of the guy I interviewed uh, uh, a, a 
a theoretical physicist, and he about bit my head off. He said, there's nothing theoretical about physics. It's physical world's real. Yet all of particle physics is a mountain of unicorns that were invented with attributes that were invented, and we have no idea what light is, what gravity is, what magnetism is, any of that stuff. And we don't even know for sure how electrons, protons, and neutrons. In fact, our model doesn't have protons and neutrons because in electrons we have other particles that have got to be similar, of course, but they don't have charge. But regardless of that, even that level, that's where we're at. We're not at the quark lateral. Throw them out. We're not at the Higgs boson. Throw them out. And all those other exotic people, throw them out. So the hilarious side of this is that maybe in their mind, they're thinking that today's theoretical physics will actually someday be used, will understand it. Or maybe in their mind is the other side that's pretty profound. That is, we will throw this stuff out. We will come up with better models. And we have lots of them. Oh, you can't have lots of them. The universe is only one way. Yes, you can. You can have hundreds of computer programs, which you, computer languages, which you do, we use probably about 20 of them so regularly that we couldn't really throw one out or lots of things would collapse in the internet, on the internet. So we live fine with that. Why can't we have different views, different models, different ways to look at how atoms are constructed? We have, in fact, lots of people outside the mainstream, critical thinkers who have models of the atom. Better models, much better models. We have people who can describe everything physically. We are doing that. In the particle model, there cannot be anything that's theoretical. Not even charge, charge isn't. Go watch my video on that. So the profound part of that is, is that applied particle physics could mean, and this is just an example, you don't be arrogant. Some people say, I'm not. I know the particle model because I'm working on it. But let's say the particle model gets accepted. We have practical things that we could do. Faster than light communications. Um, building of atoms If we once we get to universe hack four. We can do other kinds of things as well. We can make better light. We can understand things better. And we'll be able to, if people have a real model, you can then have an applied particle physics course. So it was very telling. The writers, the people who are looking into the future and dreaming of the future, they are so sick and tired of hearing theoretical, theoretical, nothing coming out of it, that they go, I'm just going to invent a world where we're already there. And that either makes us laugh our heads off of what we have in mainstream, which most of us who are critical thinkers, and if you take the time to take a look at it, you too will find it. This is thousands, tens of thousands of scientists, people from MIT, Harvard, the UK, Oxford, all the places around the world, all of them, Stanford, these people, brilliant minds on their own, have looked at it and didn't listen to the hearsay and what they read. Let me look at it myself. Let me investigate. They, f they are finding. That's Why do you think thousands? This is one of the things that's very interesting. You get people who call up professors and the professors, you know, hey, I, I, I want, I, Einstein's wrong. I've got, some, I've got something to show you about that. Or they send emails. And you, you ask a professor, and I've, we've asked them, and they say, oh, yeah, I get lots and lots, especially Einstein. You know what their answer is? Their answer is, oh, well, they just want to be famous. It goes to show you. Truth in science is not interesting to them. Fame is. That's what they're saying. So which you, I always say, well, isn't it odd that you don't get them all talking about Newton? Yeah, Newton's got some problems as well, but he's a lot better. In fact, our particle model is based on Newton. Doesn't need relativity at all. Zero. Relativity is a, it's not about physics. It's about observation. It has nothing to do with the real world. So you have these physicists who get all these things. And instead of saying, my goodness, I'm getting lots about relativity. Maybe he's really wrong. Well, the world out there 
the people who use physics every day in their cartooning and they simulate the real physical world every day they've already invented in the future applied particle physics and it is coming believe me it's coming and it ain't from the mainstream anyways I thought it was really interesting all from a one little phrase and one little series of a cartoon watching my the television with my daughter who always says dad I know you think all this wrong but I gotta pass my test what's the what answer do they want well, look at that remember don't take what I say or anybody else says on faith stay critical stay thinking I'm your I'm your science therapist David DeHilster trying to get you to the promised land of being a critical thinker think on your own come up with your own model do whatever you want but don't sit there and believe everything that you're told there's too much on the internet. You can't hide it anymore. Ciao for now.